Welcome to this introductory video on ITIL. I'm Alan Ayler. This video is for anyone who needs a quick introduction to ITIL. Now, unless you're an ITSM manager, you don't need to know all the intricacies of ITIL. You just need to know what it is. In this video, I'll describe and define ITIL. I'll introduce the phases of ITIL and describe the activities that occur within those phases. I'll walk you through a simple project so you can see how ITIL is applied in a house building scenario. But that's exactly the steps that are applied when you are building even the most complex IT infrastructure. So let's take a look at ITIL. What is ITIL? ITIL is a way of consistently delivering a service. In this case, IT service. ITIL focuses on technology as a service. It doesn't focus on the hardware or the code, but on the value a customer gets from using technology. So, what is a service? Think shipping a package. Your delivery service provides a service to you, the customer. They pick up, transport, and deliver your package. To you, the customer, the delivery service is like a black box. You don't know the details of how they do what they do, they just do it. You need a package delivered, and the delivery service provides the best way of getting your product to your customer. ITIL takes the same approach to technology. To ITIL, technology is a service, and ITIL is about structuring delivery of IT as a service that continuously delivers better value to the customer. Now that you know what ITIL is, let's define ITIL. ITIL stands for Information Technology Infrastructure Library. ITIL is a framework that describes how IT resources should be organized to deliver value by documenting the processes, functions, and roles of IT service management. When you think framework, think template, like a grocery list. It suggests what kind of information you should include in each section, but it leaves it up to you to determine how you want to execute each section based on your determined needs. That's what ITIL is, a framework for you to follow to deliver information technology services. ITIL, like a grocery list, has certain sections, or as ITIL calls it, phases. Each phase is part of the ITIL life cycle. The phases are service strategy, service design, service transition, service operation, and continuous improvement, which is part of every ITIL phase, as ITIL always tries to improve technology delivery, described as a service. Now that we've seen the phases, let's look at the purposes of each phase and the activities that are performed in them. Service strategy is about understanding your needs and figuring out how you are going to meet them. Let's say you need to figure out where you want to live. You need to consider what you require in a residence. What best suits your lifestyle? Do you need a house, an apartment, a condo, a farm, maybe even a castle? Let's say you need a house. But what do you need in a house? What do the people in your family, the stakeholders, need? What's the best way to meet their needs? How big do you need your kitchen to be? How many cars do you need to park in your garage? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? And would you like a swimming pool in the backyard? Now that you have an idea as per your needs, how are you going to pay for it? Do you build or buy? And in what time frame? You also need to consider how you're going to maintain it, fix it, repair it, and ultimately retire it or move. Figuring all this out is service strategy. In developing your service strategy, you should consider shopping around and comparing all the alternatives to ensure you made the best decision and achieved the best value. This is service portfolio management. You need to think about your budget and cash flow, whether you should build or buy. Can you afford to maintain your house as well as sell or retire it when it's time? That's financial management. Lastly, make sure you understand and anticipate your needs not only today, but tomorrow as well. That's demand management.
Service Strategy helped you create your vision, and now it's time to build a plan to make that happen. That's where Service Design comes in. Service Design is about taking your needs and expressing your requirements through design. Once you've narrowed in on what you need and how you're going to pay for it, you can begin the process of designing your house, or in the case of IT, your IT service. Taking your requirements, you begin to build the blueprints for your house. In drawing up your blueprints, ensure that you, your design takes into consideration everything you need, such as the level of services you need, such as electricity, plumbing, water and sewer. That's service management. Do you have a plan to manage risks, such as a fire alarm? That's risk management. Consider your space and storage needs. Do you have enough bedrooms and closet space? That's capacity management. What about resource availability, such as having enough bathrooms so you don't have to stand in line in the morning? That's availability management. Think about continuity, such as a backup generator in case the power goes out. IT service continuity management. And make sure you have taken security into account, such as locks on doors and windows. That's information security management. All these things are part of your service design. Once you have your house or service designed, you begin to build it. That's where service transition comes in, taking your dreams and making them real. Unfortunately, despite the best plans of mice and men, you may need to make changes. Perhaps a stakeholder, like your mother-in-law, has decided that she wants her own bathroom and you agree that's a really good idea. Well, that's change management. You, of course, have to build everything, which is development, or you might want to buy, which is procurement. You next need to configure everything, like programming the thermostat, which is service asset and configuration management, and test everything to make sure things work and have a plan to respond when things don't. That's validation and testing. Before moving in, you're going to have to know how everything works, such as the garbage disposal, the sprinkler system, the thermostat, the security system, and everything else you need to know to run your new home. That's knowledge management. Hooray, your house is built. Time for the big move. Moving everyone and everything is going to be exciting and a lot of work. That's release and deployment management. All these activities fall under the phase of service transition. Congratulations, you have the house of your dreams. You have moved in and you are proud of your new castle. But now you have to operate it. That's where operation management comes in. You are bound to hear, Honey, the light's out in the hallway. Those one-off issues are called incidents, and that's incident management. Honey, can you replace the filter on the furnace before the winter comes? Events are changes in state that may need to be addressed. That's event management. Honey, the basement's wet again. I think there's a crack in the foundation. Things may go wrong, but what is the root cause? That's problem management. Wow, you've built your own custom home. You figured out what you needed, designed it, built it, and offered it. That's fantastic. I'm guessing you learned a lot from this adventure. But I'm also guessing that if you were to do it again, you would take what you have learned and do an even better job next time. That's continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is an ITIL service that is part of every ITIL phase. It uses a seven step continuous improvement process that's basically the same as the Six Sigma DMAIC process, which is define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. The seven continuous improvement steps are, what should you measure? What can be measured? Did you gather data? How do you process the data? analyze the data, present and use the information, and then implement a corrective action. IDLE is a framework used to deliver IT services. But as you can see, the approach that IDLE follows can be applied to many business processes and activities. In this video, we've described ITIL, we've defined ITIL, we've talked about the ITIL life cycle, and we've investigated the activities that occur in each phase of the ITIL life cycle. Hopefully from watching this video, you've gotten a really good introduction to ITIL. You understand it as a framework 
and now you have a better idea of how it's applied in your IT service environment. Thank you for watching this video on ITIL. I'm Alan Awood. We'll see you next time.